There can be no nobler nor more ambitious path for America to undertake on this day of a new beginning than to help shape a just and peaceful world that is truly humane. Jimmy Carter was the 39th president of the United States, governor of Georgia, and a tireless advocate for peace and human rights around the world. James Earl Carter Jr. was born on October 1, 1924 in Plains, Georgia, a small southern town of just several hundred. Carter was the eldest son of James Sr., a well-to-do peanut farmer, and Lillian Gordy Carter, a successful nurse. Raised on their farm alongside his siblings, Gloria, Ruth, and Billy, Jimmy devoted himself to the family peanut business through the lean years of the Great Depression. On July 7, 1946, Carter married fellow Plains native, Rosalind Smith, and together they had four children. After his father's death in 1953, Carter took on his father's role in the peanut farm. Before long, Carter would feel the call of public service. In 1962, Carter won a seat in the Georgia State Senate. He soon set his sights on the office of governor, fighting through two difficult campaigns before he was finally sworn in on January 12, 1971. Publicly denouncing segregation, Carter became the face of the New South. In the wake of countless federal scandals, Carter saw an opening on the national stage. On December 12, 1974, he announced his candidacy for president. I can't promise that I will always be right, but I can promise you that I will never be satisfied with less than the best. Carter began as a relative unknown in a crowded race. There was a major headline on the editorial page of the Atlanta Constitution that said Jimmy Carter is running for what? But with his rigorous campaign schedule and down-to-earth persona, Carter handily won the Democratic nomination. My name is Jimmy Carter and I'm running for president. On November 2nd, 1976, Carter and running mate Walter F. Mondale defeated presidential incumbent Gerald Ford in the race for president. Jimmy Carter inherited the reins of a nation still recovering from the tumult of an exhausting, war-torn decade. We are a proudly idealistic nation, but let no one confuse our idealism with weakness. Carter focused his domestic efforts on energy. We now believe that early in the 1980s, the world will be demanding more oil than it can produce. In 1979, an oil shortage threw the country into a massive energy crisis. As drivers lined up for blocks in the summer heat to fill their gas tanks, Carter called on Americans to scale back their individual consumption. Every act of energy conservation like this is more than just common sense. I tell you, it is an act of patriotism. Carter approached his foreign policy with forceful optimism. He avoided military escalation, favoring a calm, diplomatic approach instead. This belief system played a crucial role in securing Carter's greatest diplomatic accomplishment in office, a treaty between Egypt and Israel. Following the 1973 Yom Kippur War, Egyptian President Anwar Sadat sought the help of the United States in negotiating peace with Israel. Over 13 tense days in September 1978, Carter hosted Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin at Camp David. The resulting treaty marked a seismic change in the Middle East, securing a peace many had seen as unattainable. And I would like to say, as a Christian, to these two friends of mine, the words of Jesus, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of God. The darkest days of Carter's presidency occurred during the Iran hostage crisis. On November 4th, 1979, an armed group of Iranian radicals stormed the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, demanding that the U.S. extradite the deposed Shah to stand trial at home. 
the radicals claimed 66 Americans as their hostages. The standoff captured the attention of the world and lasted a remarkable 444 days. The events culminated in a botched rescue mission in which eight American servicemen and one Iranian civilian were killed. The disastrous ordeal cast a heavy shadow on Carter's presidency, one that he was unable to shake during his re-election campaign. But this administration also has betrayed friends and allies abroad. On November 4th, 1980, Republican Ronald Reagan defeated Carter in the race for president. I don't really feel that my legacy needs uh, polishing. Carter committed himself to peacemaking throughout his political career. But it was after leaving office that his hands-on humanitarianism left a truly lasting impact. Founded in 1982, the Carter Center has been profoundly successful in its philanthropic work, helping to monitor elections in dozens of nascent democracies. Carter has assisted in negotiations to mediate conflicts around the world. His organization has also led efforts to eradicate disease in developing countries and established the groundwork for local public health systems. In 2002, after decades of groundbreaking work, Jimmy Carter was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. It's no matter how intense your commitment is to a profession or, or to your current duties, there, there's really always time to expand your life, to stretch your heart and mind, and, and to have things that are much more enjoyable and relaxing. Moving back home with Rosalind to Plains, Georgia, Carter lived out his final years devoted to the same ideals he had grown up with, family, community, and peace. These are not just my goals, and they will not be my accomplishments, but the affirmation of our nation's continuing moral strength and our belief in an undiminished ever-expanding American dream. Thank you very much.